So welcome back to Program Automatic Mode Part 3. In this part, I'm going to take you through the Adobe Premiere Pro workflow and then the Adobe After Effects workflow and then at the end, the final render and export settings. So first of all, we want to import our files. So two ways, select file import or double click import media in the project panel. Then navigate towards the folder where your uh, JPEG sequence is saved. At the bottom, click on options, then select image sequence. You only need to select the first frame, then click OK. Premiere will detect the entire contents of the folder and import all the files as a sequence file. Then right click new sequence from clip to create an actual sequence on the timeline. And then we can open up the sequence settings and then adjust the frame size so it's a 4K timeline sequence. And just click on OK. Now we can resize the actual video to have a slightly better composition within that frame, within the timeline. So basically just repositioning the video clip here. So once you've made that adjustment, click Control R and drag two guides onto the main timeline and then select the corner pin plugin. What we're gonna do here, we're gonna straighten up the video clip. We can see that the buildings aren't quite straight. There's two areas here. And we're just gonna use the upper left and upper right to straighten up the buildings. So back on the main timeline, I'm going to duplicate the main video clip. I'm going to duplicate it to the layer above, and then I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to space them out slightly so they're a couple of frames apart. Then I'm going to add another track, right click and add track, then I'm going to duplicate another copy just above. So I have three further copies of the same video clip, and they're all spaced several frames apart. On the top clip, I'm going to set it to 25% opacity and I'm going to repeat that process, but I'm going to set the next layer down to 50%, then the one below that to 75%, and the one at the very bottom is set to 100%. Now what that should do is help to decrease the level of flicker on the lights of the building. If it's not quite good enough, then you can simply space the layers out further so that they're more frames between each other and you can see here this is playing back on the timeline you can see that the flicker the amount of flicker has dramatically reduced on the building now I want to actually preserve the bottom part of the composition so I'm going to make a copy of the bottom layer that's set to 100% opacity and I'm going to paste it to the very very top I'm going to select the crop plugin and I'm going to drop it onto the very very top layer and then I'm going to use the mask tool to create a mask that's going to mask out the top part of the video to help preserve the lower part and then I'm going to increase the bottom slider and then we should reveal the masked out area. I'm just going to make some adjustments to the mask very quickly. In the crop settings make sure that you have mask feather set to 100 and edge feather set to 300. Uh, make sure that the mask is way outside the actual frame and you can see here that there is the light trails and the, the movement of the boats is being preserved. Turn all the other layers back on and you can see the full composition um, and you can see that the flicker of the lights in the building has really been reduced and the bottom section of the video has been preserved, it's not being blurred out. So now when I'm happy, I can literally trim these video clips in the timeline up so that they are all exactly the same length. And then I can select all of them and then just push them all to the very, very beginning. Side by side comparison, flicker and flicker removed. It's quite obvious that it has managed to smooth out that flicker. So now back in the main timeline, I'm going to select all the layers and then hit nest and create a nested sequence. Then I'm going to delete 
all the unwanted video and audio tracks off the timeline. Then I'm gonna right click again on the main clip. I'm gonna adjust the speed settings. I'm gonna set it to 200, which effectively reduces the length of the time lapse by 50%. And then I'm gonna select time interpolation to frame blending. Now hopefully this will help blur out or smooth out some of the foreground elements in the areas where we uh, remove the foreground objects. Okay, so now for some color corrections. Go to Window and select Lumetri Scopes. Now, this does look fairly intimidating, but the scopes provide accurate information about color and exposure levels so that your footage can be adjusted to avoid any clipping in the black areas and blown out information in the white areas. The waveform displays the intensity of the signal. This shows the level of each pixel and the location within the image video. Now you can actually see by looking at the scope that it kind of represents the image within the video. So I'm just going to skim through the video clip very quickly and I'm just going to make adjustments simply to avoid the, the top and the bottom areas which represents the white and black areas of the image just to avoid any clipping and blown out areas. So once we're happy with the final colour corrections we can go to File, Export and Export Media to export the final render of the video clip. Uh, so I'm going to go to, I'm going to select QuickTime I'm going to select uh, a, a Apple ProRes 422, it's perfectly fine for what we're doing. I'm going to hit Match Source, I'm going to select all the maximum settings here. And there's no audio in the clip so we can uncheck audio. And then I'm going to look at the frame sampling and we don't need to select frame blending, we've already selected it on the timeline so we can leave it at frame sampling. And then we just hit uh, Q and it will open up Adobe Media Encoder. Once we're happy with the file path and all the settings, we can just hit render. So we just give the computer a little bit of time to process the final render. And once the render is ready, we can open it up and then maybe begin to evaluate some of the things that we could have done better, possibly. And immediately I'm looking at the, um, the lower half of the image and the foreground where we edited out the two foreground objects. And you can see there's a slight kind of flicker in the water um, we could have done a little bit more work there, maybe to improve that area, possibly maybe smooth it out, maybe a slight blurring of the water. But overall, I'm quite happy with the overall image. Um, I like the way that the lights in the buildings, th that flicker has been reduced. And we've also managed to preserve the lower half of the image um, with the light trails and, the, and some of the people walking around. It's just that area in the foreground could have been improved, I think. So now I'm going to take you through the same workflow, but in Adobe After Effects instead. I click on Composition, New Composition, um, set it up as a 4K timeline, 25 frames a second, and I set the duration to 30 seconds. Now we want to go to File, Import, Multiple Files, and then navigate to the folder where the JPEG sequence has been saved. And similar to Adobe Premiere, you want to select Options and then Create Composition and also Import JPEG Sequence. Then click Open. You should have, similar to Premiere, all the sequential JPEG files within one video clip. Open Comp1, the first composition that you made, and drag the imported video clip into that composition. Then just adjust the timeline go to Composition and Trim Comp to Work Area. And same as Premiere, resize and rescale the video clip within that composition. Now I want to duplicate those video clips within the timeline the same way that I did in Premiere. So I'm going to duplicate it three times, so I have, now have four of the same video clip. And I'm going to just m slightly move each clip a couple of frames Part. And the same in Premiere, I'm going to set 25, 50 and 75% opacity onto those um, layers. Now I'm going to copy the bottom layer and paste it to the top and I'm going to add a mask and I'm going to reposition that mask so that only the bottom area is visible. 
exactly the same way that I did in Premiere, although that the mask tool is the way the mask tool is slightly different in After Effects than in Premiere. So I'm just going to make this mask and what I can do here is add a feather to the mask just to help blur out the edges slightly. Turn all the other layers back on and you should be able to see the similar results to what we had in Premiere. With that the buildings, the lights on the buildings are now gradually blurred out. So when I'm happy I'm going to repeat the process that I did in Premiere and just chop off the beginning and the end of the layers. And then I'm going to go up to Composition, Trim, Comp to Work Area. And I can select all the clips now and pre-compose them into another composition. And then open up the Effects and Presets panel, type in Pin and select the Corner Pin plugin. And we're just going to repeat the process that we did in Premiere. Control R to open up the ruler and create two guides onto the timeline. And then just adjust the top left and the top right so that we just straighten up the buildings. And now we can just adjust the scale just to make the composition a little bit taller. Now we want to add an adjustment layer to the top of the composition. So it's the top layer. Add the Lumetri color to the adjustment layer. And now we're just repeating the process that we did in Premiere by going to Window and Lumetri Scopes. And we're just going to go through the various settings here. And again, just to avoid any kind of clipping at the top and the bottom of the white and black areas. So I'm just going to skim through the composition very, very quickly, create the settings that, that kind of works for the entire duration of the clip. And I think that probably is the best that we can do. And then we want to go to time stretch and we want to basically halve the length of the time lapse because 24 seconds is, is too much. So we're going to knock it down to 50, so we've effectively halved it. And then we're going to add the frame blending, which we're going to be pixel motion. So very similar to what we did in Premiere, actually. And then we can select trim comp to work area again. And that resizes the work area to the length of the actual video file. And we're just going to skim through again and see how that looks. It's looking pretty good. So now we want to select the resolution to full. We want to go to file and then export adds to media encoder queue. And here we are, we can now double click on this area and we're into the media encoder settings. Exactly the same export settings as what we had in Premiere. So uncheck audio, match source, Adobe ProRes 422 is perfectly fine for what we're doing. Um, make sure the maximum render settings are on and then click on OK. And then of course you have the option to save the file into a certain location and then just click on render. Wait a few moments. And now you can see a side by side comparison with the video file on the left, which is what we produced in Adobe Premiere to the one on the right, which was produced in After Effects. And you can see that really is no difference. They're exactly, the export is exactly the same. So slightly different process because they're different programs, but the end result is pretty much the same. So thank you so much for watching these video tutorials. If you want professional looking results, then you really have to put a lot of work and effort into the post-processing of the time-lapse videos. When you look back on the work that you've produced, I think you probably agree that it's worth the time and the effort.